Umena vriate vanir, rata dar so malenacha, ya tol benavr to garba, tatha tenadam arvtam. Translation As fire is covered by smoke, as a mirror is covered by dust, or as the embryo is covered by the womb, the living entity is similarly covered by different degrees of this lust. Purport. There are three degrees of covering of the living entity by which his pure consciousness is obscured. This covering is but, is but lust under different manifestation like smoke in the fire, dust on the mirror, and the womb about the embryo. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I just lost myself. When lust is compared to smoke, it is understood to the fire of the living spark can be a little perceived. In other words, when the living entity exhibits his Krishna consciousness slightly, he may be likened to be to the fire covered by smoke. Although fire is necessary where there is smoke, there is no overt manifestation of fire in the early stage. This stage is like the beginning of Krishna consciousness. The dust on the mirror refers to a cleansing, cleansing process of the mirror of the mind by so many spiritual methods. The best process is to chant the holy names of the Lord. The embryo covered by the womb is an elogy in illustrating a helpless position. For the child in the womb is so helpless that he cannot even move. This stage of living condition can be compared to that of the trees. The trees are also living entities, but they have been put in such a condition of life, but such a great exhibition of lust that they are almost void of all consciousness. The covered mirror is compared to the birds and beasts and the smoke covered fire is compared to the human being. In the form of human being, the living entity may revive, revive a little Krishna consciousness and if he makes further development, the fire of spiritual life can be kindled in the human form of life. By careful hand, handling of the smoke in the fire, fire can be made to blaze. Therefore, the human form of life is a chance for the living entity to escape the entanglement of material existence. In the human form of life, one can conquer the enemy lust by cultivation of Krishna consciousness under able guidance. Is that the end of the purport, Vaishnavi? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yes. We came to the end of the purport. Okay. All right, so uh, Lord, Krishna, Lord Krishna is giving us a description about the different degrees of lust. We're giving three, three, three examples compared to different conditions of lust. First of all, the fire covered by smoke then the mirror covered by dust, and then the embryo by the womb. So the embryo by the womb is the helpless condition, and that's compared to living entities and bodies like trees. The, and it, Prabhupada says that this, their stage is so much, they're so much covered by lust that they're put into that condition of life. They're put into a condition in which they cannot hardly, they can hardly move. 
the tree is it's, it's like a living entity whose legs are stuck in the ground so it's a very lamentable condition of course, there are different kinds of trees. Some trees are pious and some trees are not. Anyway, the example was given about the trees and the help that they're in a helpless condition. And the dust on the mirror just like we talk about cleansing the mirror of the mind, the dust. So, this is compared to uh, the covered mirror is compared to the birds and the bees. So, the birds and bees are a higher form of life than the trees. The trees are immovable living entities, but the birds and the bees, they can move. But still, they're not, they're not like the human form of life. It's a degree of lust, right? The birds and the beasts and animal species, they don't have proper developed consciousness. But the smoke covered by the fire, that is the, compared to the human form of life the beginning of Krishna consciousness is with the human form of life. In the human form of life, we can inquire. So Prabhupada explains about the importance of handling, hand, handling the smoke to produce the fire to produce the flames. You don't want just to have smoke only. The, the purpose of the smoke is to, that you want to get flames. So the human form of life is meant to develop the highest consciousness. And it says, as Prabhupada explains, in the human form of life, you can get free from birth and death. And one can conquer the enemy lust by Krishna consciousness. So it's possible to get free of lust, but we have to be guided. We need the guidance. So in this, in this section of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is going to tell us how we can get rid of lust, how we can conquer over lust. First of all, he's identifying the different categories of lust different levels. So it's the, the, the worst situation is in the, the body of the trees, the immovable living entities. And then, the, then you have the animal species and then you have the human form of life. So the human form of life is an opportunity to cultivate higher consciousness. But we have to do it. We have to do it under the proper guidance. We have to have that guidance from the the right people to direct us. Therefore, Krishna is directing us here in the Bhagavad Gita. He's going to identify. He's already identified the enemy, and he's telling us about the enemy. And he's going to tell us where it resides, and he's going to tell us how we can conquer it. Yes? Any question? Guru Maharaj, we offer uh, uh, fruits and uh, leaves and flowers, right? So, some, so the tree also gets a human life next birth. Is it like that? It can also get Krishna conscious, Guru Maharaj. The, if we take some fruits and offer them to Krishna, he, then the tree benefits, yes. But uh, it may, may be fortunate, it may, it may happen, that because we take some fruits or flowers from the trees and offer them to the Lord, 
So that tree, the tree will be benefited and the benefit may be that in the next life. Of course, the trees, trees generally live quite a long time. And how long does the tree have to live before, before it ends its life and then takes another form of life? It's hard to know. But de definitely, we, we do speak like that, that every, everyone benefits. That if, you are, if you take something from the tree and offer it to Krishna, then the tree's benefited. Exactly how much benefit? And yeah, hopefully, may get a human form of life. Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's not just getting the human form of life but you want to get the association of a devotee. So you may have the human form of life, but you may, may not have the opportunity to get the right association. Yes, Guru Maharaj. It's, it's very important that we get that opportunity to associate with the right people. You know, in the holy dam, in the holy place, there are trees, in the trees, they're growing in the holy dam. They're also pious. <clears throat> and they're in a holy place. So, we have to consider, is it, is it necessary for them to give up the tree body? Of course. In the human form of life, they can do much more. The body of a tree, consciousness is limited. But in the, in, in the spiritual sense, in the holy dham, the trees are very special because they're giving flowers and fruits for the service of Krishna. So that's very, very nice devotional service that they're doing. We don't know exactly how much the benefit will they get a human form in the next life. They should they should definitely get some kind of opportunity to continue. The laws of material nature are very complex. It's hard to know exactly what will happen. But certainly some trees are very pious and some trees are very sinful. Some trees, they, they just have poison. They don't give any flower or any fruits. But some trees are very pious. And it's even said that, that there are some trees, there are some great devotees, they become trees in the holy place. Like at Radha Kund, there's trees there on the banks of Radha Kund. And it mm -hmm. said these five, there are five trees there at the side of Radha Kund. These five trees are incarnations of the Pandavas that the Pandavas appeared as these trees. So when they were making the Radha Kund, when they were excavating, you know, digging out the Kund, they, they had, the, the Raghunath Das had the dream. And in the dream, he was told, don't remove these trees, that the Pandavas are living there in the form of trees, and you should not disturb these trees. So, So it's hard to understand everything about the position of these different trees. Gen generally, we're kind to all living entities. We don't cut trees. There was one tree growing 
on the land of a temple and somehow the devotees cut down the trees, they cut, they cut it down a bit because it, and Prabhupada was very upset and Prabhupada said, you will suffer for this. He said, you should not cut the tree. So we have to be respectful to all forms of life. So the tree is also a form of life. So we're kind and careful to respect all the different forms of life. Okay. We'll Guru go. Maharaj, should we go for the next verse? Yes. Three point thirty nine. Ramya Mataji, do you want to read this? Oh, it's Vaishnavi. Thank you. Thank you, Mataji. Avartam janam etana nijanino nitya vairina kama rapena kaunteya dushpure dushpare nalinasha Translation, thus the wise living entity's pure consciousness became covered by his eternal enemy in the form of lust, which is never satisfied and which burns like fire. Purpose, it is said in the Manusmriti that lust cannot be satisfied by any amount of sense enjoyment, just as fire is never extinguished by a constant supply of fluid. In the material world, the center of all activities is sex, and thus this material world is called Maintyane Agara, or the uh, scackles of sex life. In the ordinary prison house, criminals are kept within bars. Similarly, the criminals who are disobedient to the laws of the Lord are shackled by sex life. Advancement of material civilization on the basis of Sense gratification means increasing the duration of the material existence of a living entity. Therefore, this last is the symbol of ignorance by which the living entity is kept within the material world. While one enjoys sense gratification, it may be that there is some feeling of happiness, but actually the so-called feeling of happiness is the ultimate enemy of the sense enjoyer. Hare Krishna. So Lord Krishna is describing the nature of this lust that he says it, it's never satisfied and it burns like fire. So there's the illusion that, you know, we, we, that we have the illusion that we will satisfy our desire. We have material desires, right? We have material desires and these material desires can cause us to do things, try to get pleasure we're looking for happiness to enjoy what we would call what we call as devotees we call it sense gratification then we try to enjoy the material body in different ways eating sleeping mating defending basically around these four activities different ways but the problem is that we're never actually able to satisfy these desires. And Prabhupada points out that even though there, there's some feeling of happiness, but the happiness is, he said, that this is actually the, the enemy. It's, it's not actually real happiness. But there's a feeling that we're, go we're going to get some pleasure, we're going to enjoy there. So that pleasure is actually there in the mind. Some illusion in the mind that I'm going to enjoy some pleasure here. But this is actually the problem. Why? Because we will never be satisfied. It's never, we're never going to find the the kind of pleasure which we actually want. 
And the result is that the desire just simply increases more and more. Just like if you have a, a, an irritation in the skin and you scratch it. So you scratch the skin. The scratching doesn't take away the, it doesn't cure anything. It only makes the irritation worse. But there's the illusion that by scratching, by scratching the irritation, that I'll feel, I'll find some relief from the disturbance, from the irritation. And so lust is like that. It's like a burning of the skin. We want, we want to get pleasure. We want happiness but we're never able to satisfy it but it, it keeps burning it burns and there's there's the illusion we're thinking that oh i'm enjoying i'm having pleasure we're thinking some pleasure is there but that pleasure is very temporary very short and it's it's not actually real pleasure but it's the illusion because, because, it's a sinful, because it's sinful activity. So it simply binds us to the material world. It keeps us in the material world. It doesn't get us free of the material world. It makes us a bigger prisoner in the material life. We become more tied up. The, the ropes or the, the, the chains which are tying us become tighter the more we engage in the different sinful activities, the more we become a prisoner in this material world. So that's the danger. All right, any questions? Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, one question. Materialists say that anger blinds. Uh, how does this expression uh, relate to the uh, disturbances in the Krishna consciousness? Yes, but well, anger binds. So similarly, where anger is coming from lust. So the, the lust, it's not only the, the anger which binds, it's the, it's the lust which binds. It binds, the, the, meaning that we, we become more a prisoner in the material world. We become more entangled and more attached to trying to find pleasure. But we never get the real happiness we want because it's described here that the lust is never satisfied. The idea is that if I do this thing, if I, if I eat this food or I do this activity, the idea is that I should feel some relief from it. I should feel some satisfaction, but rather it's just the opposite. We're never satisfied. You never get enough. You always want more. So this is a problem. There's the illusion that I'm going to be happy, I'm going to be satisfied, but it doesn't happen like that. So that's the problem with these uh, lusty activities. Our consciousness becomes covered. Our pure con now pure consciousness is Krishna consciousness, but it becomes covered by lust. Instead of thinking of ourselves as a servant of Krishna, we think of ourselves as the enjoyer. And we think everything is for my enjoyment and for my pleasure. So we try to enjoy, we try to enjoy the senses, we try to enjoy the tongue, we try to sleep, we try to eat more, all, all the different activities. We're never satisfied. But we keep trying, but we never get the happiness we want. Because happiness is not found in the body. Happiness is not there in the senses. The real happiness is in the soul. 
we have to come to the spiritual platform to get real happiness. All right. Do you understand? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, uh, one question. Uh huh. With abstinence, the seminal canals of the genital organs in men uh, become guarded with sperm and provoke prostate disease. Uh, disease. Uh, uh, during sex, if the partner is healthy, a man take hormone estrogen from woman and woman from men. The hormone testosterone with, uh, is good for health. <laughs> this is not true. Prob that it's a, it's good for health. <laughs> That's what people, materialistic people try to say like that. They say that it's good for health, but we have to understand that the, the, the discharge from the male organ, it's meant to produce a child. It's not, there, there's no pleasure in that activity it's meant but there's the illusion of pleasure the purpose of the activity the purpose of the sex organ is to produce a child to produce a child but people are thinking that oh this is for health actually it's not for health because the, the semen which is coming from the male organ that is blood. So to make one drop of semen, it takes many drops of blood. And to produce one drop of blood, it takes a lot of energy from the body. You have to eat good food in order to have enough blood. And then from the blood, then you can make, the body can make semen. And that semen, can be the source of life. It can combine to produce a, a child in married life. But if the man will waste his semen, then he will become very weak physically. His health will suffer. People who engage in illicit activity, unnecessary using, discharging, unnecessary discharging their semen, then they will suffer very bad health. But if they will practice brahmachari and restrain the semen, then they will have better health. And they'll live a longer life and they'll have a good memory, sharp memory. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, means abstinence is good for health. Yes, it's good for yes. health. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Thank you very much. Guru Maharaj, should we go for chanting? Yeah, if you like, we can do. Okay, Guru Maharaj. I thought you had a nice program for Gaur Purnima. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we had a good program. But the, uh, you know, Guru Maharaj, the singing is banned in this uh, Corona rule. So that's why, that's what we, uh, for, we are a little bit uh, like, uh, without singing, our major part of the program is singing the Kirtana, now singing is banned. Oh, I heard you singing. Another... Yeah, last week we sang a little bit, but we were always scared uh, looking here and there. But uh, this week we don't want to take uh, any risk. 
So meetings are still banned, huh? No, no, meeting is there, but singing is banned. We, we can meet up to 15 people outside, but uh, we should not sing. One, singing can be done only among family members. Singing, huh? Banned. Mm. Because maybe they thought uh, singing will uh, uh, make the corona spread more or something like that. So many problems, huh? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Did you have prasadam there in the park? Did you bring prasadam to the park? Uh, yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we brought uh, some prasadam. All of, our, all of us, all of them made one prasadam and we offered it to Gauranithai. And we had we had Ega Desi prasadam. Some of them didn't have because they were fasting. Other people who didn't fast, they had prasadam. Well, some people were fasting. Yeah, ten, yeah, some few, two or three we fasted. Oh. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. So maybe this week, tomorrow we are meeting again. Maybe we will do chanting and then uh, reading a little bit and then, yeah, like Prasadam, Guru Maharaj. In the park. Yeah, in the park. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All local first people. All yeah. Geneva. Yes, Guru Maharaj. All are living nearby in Geneva. Near my house. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It looked a bit cold. I saw they were wearing the jackets. Yeah, a bit cold, Guru Maharaj, but very good. Uh, last week, it was very good, around the 22 already. Maybe tomorrow, it might be a bit cold. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so we will chant Hare Krishna now. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nechananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 